press him to the fence, four shots and go with a high kick. Here's how I won the Cage Warriors lightweight title. There's my opponent coming from the biggest gym in America, aka training with Khabib and Islam. And there's me coming from a little gym in Middlesbrough that's held together by duct tape and dreams. So as we're going to start this fight, I'm expecting him to wrestle straight off the bat. I'm waiting for him to come out and shoot. I think he's going to try and cold clock me and just get the grappling started early. So he come out and then immediately he head kicks, which took me off guard a little bit. His toes kind of whisked my nose, but I had my arm block ready for it. I'm trying to just hold the center. I'm trying to just stay calm because this has been a long time in my life training for this fight. Been about eight months with cancellations. Two times this title fight got cancelled. I'm just trying to stay calm and get my breath going. Get my breath going and keep my stance. Getting the feints going. He's got good feints. I just touch the corner with that low kick. That calf kick as he pivots on it. His weight's on that leg. So I hit the calf kick and he jabs back. I'm just trying to hold the centre. It's a slightly smaller cage. When you're fighting in the O2 Indigo, certain venues you get a slightly smaller cage. And... I was thinking that was going to play to his advantage because he has good wrestling. I look for a body shot and an overhand and I just whiff slightly. Get off balance, but I get back to it, back into the centre. I want to stay in that 20th anniversary logo in the centre of the cage. I switch southpaw and that gets that opens it up for a right kick. I'm switching southpaw, you know, switching stance back and forth just to make it trickier for him to time takedowns. You know, wrestlers, they'll try and time your step. They'll try and time your step when you jab. Step on a combination and grab that standing lead leg. Whereas if you switch a bit back and forth, it's harder for them to get the timing. They kind of have to get timings for both stances. You throw on that left kick again. I'm arm blocking. I come back with a calf kick. That calf kick's a good shout because he's trying to jab. When someone jabs, you got to look to counter their, their jab with the calf kick because they're stepping heavy. They can't block it. I missed with the cross counter there. And again, he's using this circling long footwork. I'm going southpaw. He does a good job whenever I go southpaw. The main weapon when I was going southpaw was that left straight to the body. I look for one to the head. Not the cleanest land. But he was really good at dealing with the southpaw. See, he pops me with a right cross through the middle there. He got the outside angle. And I just get him with a body shot on the way out. He hits a jab. I'm just trying to hand fight. He was really good at that hand fight. He was getting his top, his hand, his left hand on top of my right hand very well. I hit him with my first real good shot of the fight. He looks to jab. And I hit him with a right hand cross counter over the top. Kind of pull counter. And I knew it hurt him. Because he shot in immediately after. That was a, that was a good sign that it hurt. That he shot in. He hit a body kick. I'm going for a calf kick there. The calf kick there is just stopping him circling. Whenever he's planting his weight. To jab or circle out to that side. I'm hitting the calf kick. Because I don't want him to keep circling him out scot free. I'm going southpaw. He's, he throws a good two shots. I go to the body again. And left straight again. Quite minimalist attacks from Southpaw, but it was just to really give him the, that different look, make it hard for him to time his shot. He'd fought like three Southpaws in a row as well, so he's really well versed for it. He, get, he checks that first calf kick, he gets his first check, doing a little finger waggle, but it doesn't bother me. I'm back to Southpaw, trying to keep my left elbow tight to shoot a left straight through. He goes high kick and I just keep some pressure on him. He's landing a bit more volume in this round. And it's playing on my head because I'm expecting him to wrestle. But he keeps jabbing me, landing right hands, landing long kicks. I was, it was kind of playing in my head. I'd rather have took the jabs on the top of my head though than overreact and give him easy takedowns. So it's not working out amazingly for me. I've landed some good shots. But see how my nose is starting to get busted up. He, that was one of his good right straights because it kind of went down and chopped down on my nose. Cut me. But he shot. I sprawled. And as he circle out, I go for the body hook. Good idea to go for that body hook as a circle out. If you go for that hook to the head, they might roll it. They might roll, slip underneath it, whatever. you. Go for that body hook. They can't really move away from it. I'm switching southpaw again. I'm starting to get a bit bloody here. We, we get a lot of hip feints. We're hip feinting back and forth. I go for that cross counter again. One of my most solid lands of the, of the first round. Because he's landed some jabs. But sometimes when I counter, it's a bit more solid because he's landed the jabs. I try and counter his right hand with a calf kick. We're going trading 50-50. I'm moving in southpaw. And there's a little stop here to fix the tape on his gloves. I look down and I'm just bleeding on my chest. And I think, I'm thinking, part getting humiliated by the boxing of this wrestler. But part thinking, oh, this is just a bit sick, isn't it? A bit gnarly. I land a little jab there. I'm just trying to make him move as well. The more he moves, the harder it'll be for him as we go round to round to round in a five round fight. 
It's hard to move on the back foot, pop, throw combinations, faint, consistently work like that in a five round fight. I go calf kick and miss a few punches. I'm just trying to pressure in. That pops right through the, the, the guard as well. He did a good job where he'd faint. I put my guard up and the, mem the moment I relax he'd pop his shot through there. I throw a few wild shots at the end of the round, a head kick and then a superman punch. Just somewhat different. Keep them till the end of the round because I don't want to get bowled over with a takedown or, or lose 30 seconds of the round because I've gone for a head kick and he's caught it and I've ended up on my back. So I save them till the end of the round. Sketchy first round. At this point my nose is gushing with blood and I'm thinking that I've just been humiliated by this wrestler. I've got jabbed and hit with a lot of right hands and I'm thinking I've been outboxed here. I should be the striker and he should be the wrestler. But anyway, physically, I was just in autopilot mode. My body was just doing what I'd been trained to do for the past months, years, what have you. He opens up with that left kick. Again, I try and counter with a right low kick to a standing leg but I just miss it. I lean in with a 1-2 and lose my discipline with my stance there. Well, I'm just trying to keep him busy with feints. Hold the centre, I look for the calf kick again as he circles off. I jab, and he leans back with a left kick. He goes 1-2, I'm jumping back, and then jump back on him. A little out in. I didn't want to just jump out and stay there. I wanted to get back and then back in. To make sure that he's constantly having to move. He's moving more than me. He has to cover more distance than me. He has to work harder than me. He lands some good shots there, and I whiff on my right-hand counter. But it's all going to the game plan of getting him tired using that attrition he inside low kicks nice inside low kick not a load of damage but it's just scoring a point and he's getting his jabs off i'm switching southpaw seeing if i can find that left straight again but he hits me with the right straight he lands a lot of good straight shots and i'm eating a lot it's kind of reminiscent of ally akinta versus khabib where ally akinta managed to defend so many takedowns by just eating the jab and not giving him anything off it so i was kind of a bit like that but just trying to look for my counters as well I'm going jab for jab. We have we trade a lot of jabs in this. I go for a little bit of a cross hand check, Piotr Jan style. And he goes low kick and I counter with the right hand. Just brace and counter. Especially when it's a thigh kick, it's easier to brace and counter. He's circling. Again, I'm getting him covering more distance than me. That'll pay dividends in a five round fight. I look for a jab. Kind of just scuffs him on the shoulder. And he circles back off. And as he's circling that way, the weight's heavy on that leg. It gives me the calf kick. He goes left kick again. I go... Arm block, very important to get it across three points of com contact, hand, forearm, upper arm, or you might damage your arm. I start fainting at him here, and I remember in my head just trying to do like a B-Tech Jai Herbert impression. I love Jai Herbert, Team Renegade fighter, a former Cage Warriors lightweight champion in the UFC, big fan of him. He goes left kick and I counter, and I look for a body hook, and that's a really good advantage of throwing hooks to the body. Is that he tried to duck in on a takedown, but he couldn't get it because my underhook, my left arm, was already there to pull him up and stop the takedown. If I'd swung that hook to the head, he could have ducked under and probably would have took me down. We both exchange a lot of hip feints in this fight. He lands some tight shots, like tight three shots. His punches are a bit tighter at this point. We're trading jabs. I get a bit loopy. I get a bit loopy on my hooks and a little bit out of balance. But I'm just keeping him on the feint. Managed to deflect those and body shot back. Those body shots, they take a bit of time to pay dividends. Actually scuffed him a bit. It wasn't really a groin shot. My God, I thought it was. I'm just happy he didn't take any rest because I wanted to get him tired. He goes body shot on me. I hear you as corner say, lovely body shot. But, you know, me and Harry just go <laughs> days trading body shots with each other. I didn't feel none of that. I go southpaw again. He throws a few shots. I managed to deflect quite a few of them. He catches a good right hand and my right hook scuffs. I go look to counter his uh, counter his jab, but he counters my right hand with a hook. He goes first and third. I could hear his boxing coach in the corner shouting, first and third, first and third. I go calf kick again, then try and mix up with a front kick to the middle. I go arm block on the body kick and counter with a straight to the body. I wanted to counter those kicks with straight shots to the body rather than just to the head first. Now I can feel he's starting to stand still a bit. Is he's losing his stance against the fence. Whereas earlier in the round he was managing to keep his stance a lot better by keeping that bit of distance. As he gets close to the fence here, he loses his stance, squares up, and it opens up body shots, opens up all sorts. He's still active though, he hits that inside kick and I just let it take me into southpaw. I switch back to orthodox and I whiff on that hook. But I don't want to just walk after him Nate Diaz style. I want to get into the centre. That way I can counter. I hit that cross counter again. As he jabs, I slip off and hit the right hand. 
I'm trying to faint. He, and here, I land a good right hook, roll into a left hook. There's actually a really subtle little body hook faint. I call it the reverse Canelo before I throw that right hand. And then I always know that it has a good effect if he shoots straight after. He's lost a bit of sting on his punches here. He's thrown like four shots in a row. And they are getting through like that was a good one that went inside of my hook. But I can feel some of the stings gone. And I can feel things shifting towards my favor at this point. There's little signs you can tell from someone. He's still in the fight. He's still throwing good shots. But he loses a bit of his sting in his punches. His stance starts to go as he's circling out. He doesn't keep that discipline. He almost walks sideways sometimes. I hit him with like a karate jab, just vertical fist. He gets a nice check on my calf kick. People have learned how to check that calf kick now. And I want a big finish to the round. Press him to the fence, four shots, and go with the high kick. Again, that landed clean. I want to know how rocked he was. It's hard to tell because he goes back to the corner. It's the end of the round, so you can't really tell how rocked he was. And another thing is I just want to keep that high kick until the end of the round. So if I did get on my back, I don't lose much. There was a point in this round, or maybe it was the last round, where I had to spit a big clump of blood out my throat like it was a lump of peanut butter just so I could get a breath. But it's the third round, we're getting deeper into the fight and I can feel the effects of my kind of attritive fighting, the body work, the calf kicks, starting to get the better of him. I'd been forcing him to move a lot more, he was having to move circle around the cage which used a lot of energy and I could see little signs that he was breaking just a little bit. See he, shot, he was starting to shoot right off the bat. Normally he was trying to strike, strike, strike and he would only shoot if I landed a good shot. But he's already shot once in the first 30 seconds. You can see how his stance is flattening against the fence. He's shooting again. He'd already shot twice in 30 seconds of this round, which was more than he'd done in the first two rounds of the fight. He goes left kick again. I go for a body hook. He hits me with two two shots, a jab and a right hand, because I leaned into that body hook too much. I left myself open. I, I just pop him with like a karate jab. He won twos back. I kind of deflect it. But I'm keeping him here a lot better now. Keeping him on the fence, where he's fully against the fence, and he kind of loses his stance. As he circles out and jabs, I hit him with the right hand over the top. That's a good shot feint he did there. I nearly face planted off of that. It was hard to get my grip to get my grip on the floor again. But I'm back to my stance just trying to work him over. He goes left body kick, so I go left hook to the body as he circles out. Looking for that right cross and he parries really nicely and throws a head kick. You know, you've got to respect those head kicks. Even if someone's tired, it doesn't take a lot if you dip wrong. Fourth round, fifth round, it can always happen where you get knocked out. I go southpaw just to dig that shot to the body. He had really good hand fighting from southpaw. He jabbed me there. You know, he was really good at fighting me whenever I went southpaw. He touches three shots in, but I know he's using a lot of effort to throw these longer combinations. It's always hard work to do that amateur boxing style, like three shots and move, three shots and move. I see his stance kind of capitulate a little bit as he went to that corner post, bumped into it, but he's still throwing good shots. He's still throwing a bit more volume, and I'm looking for solid one-shot, two-shot counters. I was having my excess success as I was extending combos, but it's always hard to extend combos when you've got that threat of the takedown in your back of your mind. Now he starts to hold the center a little bit. I could hear his corner shout, Now hold that, Kyle. Stay there. Stay there. Um, and I was kind of interested to see, can he stay there? Can he stay there? He circles out and I hit the calf kick. So he's held the center of that 20th anniversary Cage Warriors logo there, which is where you want to be. He held that for all the 20 seconds and I do a few feints and he's starting to get back to the fence again. I knew, he, I knew he was starting to break there. He wanted to hold the centre. That would have been much better for him. But he was starting to lose his stance, fall back a bit. I go for a left cross. He slips. He fires back and I slip. My nose is really busted up at this point, but I'm not bothered. I'm just forcing breath out my mouth. That's two of the best shots I land in this round. I check the inside kick. Go right cross to the body and left hook. Two shots to the body. At this point, Harry says, Harry, my brother in my corner says, Jab the chest. I think it's this point. He says, jab the chest. And then, I think it's this point. Kyle jabs the chest. And Harry says, not you, Kyle. And Kyle has a little grin on him. He throws three punches. And I go body shot counter straight away. That was all an instinct. Just an instinctual counter. I didn't even realize I'd knocked him down until this point. And he's got up. Credit to him. Getting up from a body shot. And he actually lands his best shots here. Lands his best shots as I'm, as I'm pressuring in. Getting a bit reckless. I want the finish. But it's all a bit of a blur at this point. There's nothing really conscious. He puts four shots together. I can see my blood on his gloves. He gets a little right cross. And I just chip him away with a hook. I go for that body hook feint in a right cross. Roll up with the hook. But this time he hits a right straight in the middle of my hook. 
cuts through the middle of my hook with a right cross and that dinged me quite a bit. You can see me going into this leaning forward high boxing guard Roman Gonzalez type stance just to catch my catch my wherewithal. He throws three shots but I managed to deflect him. He slips my counter and I'm just trying to keep him to the fence. I'm in zombie mode here. I'm in zombie robot mode trying to find my shots. I get a bit loopy. I go for the body because I know he's hurt to the body. I want to hit him there again. I jab the top of his forehead and I, I feel that hurt my fingers. My fingers were pretty swollen up after this fight. No surprise. I go right uppercut body hook because that's just a power combo. Hoping it would finish the fight there but he firms it. He managed to turn his abs onto it rather than taking it on the liver. I go calf kick. He counters with the right hand. I'm just trying to pressure him, pressure him. But be intelligent with it because you can throw away the fight. I nearly did. By being wild, I got hit with a good right hand. I counter with the right hand, getting him back to the fence. He's losing his stance a bit. We're hand fighting with two hands here. Managed to deflect that one, two. I go body hook as he circles onto it. And I'm just trying to keep him to the fence. It's, it's weird knowing that you're this close to the finish, this close to the title, but not throwing it away. I go for a hip fence screw shot and then a right hook body as he circles. And it's towards the end of the round. Wanting to put a stamp on it, we're exchanging. It's kind of funny. I hit him with that body shot, drop him, he gets back up and he lands some of the best shots of his fight. Best shots of this fight, some of the best shots he lands. But it kind of might have played in my favour because he took this body shot and then was back up using loads of energy where he's, the wind had just been taken out of him. Where at each point I was breathing, just forcing my breath. My gum shield actually pops out at one point because I'm breathing, forcing my breath after every exchange that much just to keep me going for the five rounds. This is the fourth round and this was the round that before the fight I predicted I would get the finish in. I'd always been excited to see the fourth round. This was the first time I'd seen a fourth round in my full career, championship rounds. And it was starting to go more and more in my favour. A lot of those attritive shots, calf kicks, body shots, the pressure was starting to add up and play in my favour. I'm still trying to keep my fence busy. I want to be busy with my fence. I want to keep discipline with that. I've had fights before where I've gotten into the third round and kind of plodded and stopped my fence altogether. Whereas I felt a lot fitter in this one. I wanted to keep the fence going. Force bad shots out of him like that. And I can use my left frame, my right arm, underhook to defend the takedown. And just keep pressure on him. I knew that's a lot of energy wasted by him. I kind of glance him with a, with a cross counter. A lot of jabs to the top of the head. I go body hook. I want to keep consistent with the body hook. He's there for the jab now. He's not moving the same way disciplined as he was in the, in the first and second. And I could feel a lot of stings gone from his shot. I'm just trying to pop him with the jab, pop him with the jab, keep something in his face, not just load up for big shots. I look for a feint into a right hand and he takes a massive shot, runs me across the full length of the cage and I could just feel there a lot had gone out of him. That was his last hurrah, he's touching away with shots, I'm just trying to keep my breath going, almost forcing the breath because I know there could still potentially be another round and a half whatever to go but I want to keep on him. He throws three shots. I faint, a left hook to the head, go to the body, and that's that's the finishing shot. Drops him to his bum, I frame off with the left hand, and I just feed right hands into his face, and that was finally it. Cage Warriors lightweight champion. That was just such an overwhelming experience at the time, because it had been such a long period of my life training for that belt. I first got the call to fight for the belt in October 2021, and I managed to fight for the belt in July 2022. I had a Bunch of cancellations. I had an on the day cancellation in December 2021. I was supposed to fight for it in March, but the original guy pulled out and I had to have a uh, catchweight fight. And then that was the longest camp ever. And that training camp started so terribly. I was about 90 kilos, well, 88, 90 kilos. And then it was the first time in my life I ever had staff. It was the first time, 12 years of training, first time I ever had staff. So I had to be on antibiotics, which made me feel shit. And there was not a lot of people to train with. You know, I'd gone through a few people. There wasn't any people to train with at that point. So there were sessions where it was just me and Harry. And it would get to me. I was thinking, I'm training this little gym. It's just me and Harry. No other training partners here. And he's training with Islam and Khabib and the best lightweights in the world. But then I just had to put that out of my brain. I had to think, so long as I've got Harry, I've got my brother here I can train with. I can be a world champion with that and everything else is a bonus. So here's the finish. As he circles out to his right, I faint the hook to the head, hook the body and that drops him. Hitting him as he circles into it, that little faint to the head to bring the hand up, to open up the body shot. I use my left arm frame, 
just to keep him from getting into a single leg or something. If I just swarmed in too much, he could grab that single leg and possibly get a chance to recover. But keep that left hand down, just stiff arm him with the left hand, and I can just hit him with right hands. Not the not the best right hands in the world, but I just want the finish at that point. I could feel it building up with each shot. Frame with the left hand, and I could feel it each shot. It's my fucking belt, my fucking belt. And that's what I screamed immediately as Mark Goddard put his hands on me to push me away to stop the fight. That's what I was screaming. But yeah, it was just an overwhelming fe- feeling at this point. It was even better that it was a bit of a war. You don't want to, you don't want to win a war, but it makes it a bit more of an emotional experience. I, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of tea siders in the O2 Indigo at this point. I hear him shouting T T T cider T T T cider, which is the Borough chant. I finally get that belt around me. What a what a night this was, uh, insane. And then I remember being having a McDonald's with my girlfriend at like four in the morning. And I couldn't get to sleep at all. At that point, I, I think I had a Ben and Jerry's cookie dough and a big McDonald's. Because it's not really food. It's it's just easy, soft stuff that squashes and it's easy to eat. 